All right, so the symmetry of polar equations. We have talked about symmetry before, but um, um, that was with functions and relations like at the beginning of the year. We talked about them being symmetric to the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. Then we had even and odd functions. We tested them graphically. We tested them algebraically, all that good kind of stuff. We are not going to test these algebraically. That's why we skipped it and we're coming back to it because we want to look at the graphs first. So let's look at <clears throat> excuse me, the different types of symmetry. So in this one right here, this graph is symmetric to the line theta equals pi halves. This is theta equals pi halves in your polar coordinate system. That is the same as being symmetric to the y-axis. Right? So that shouldn't be very hard for us to determine. This one is symmetric to the polar axis. That's the same as being symmetric to the x-axis. This one is symmetric to the pole. That is the same as being symmetric to the origin. So when something was symmetric to the origin, we could rotate it 180 degrees, and then the, the graph would look the same. So if I took this and rotated it 180 degrees, it would look the same. There's your symmetry to the pole. Okay, Easy enough? Because it's technically not new. It's just talking about um, polar stuff. So if we were going to test them algebraically, this, these are the rules for that. We're not going to do it, but I thought I'd just go ahead and give you the rules. Um, we replace r theta with like negative r and negative theta, work them out, see if we have equivalent equations. That's your algebraic test. But since we know what the graphs look like, we can worry about really doing that stuff if we need to when, we, when you really, really start applying polar, which would be in another class, because it's not like you'd have all that, necessarily remember all that. I'd rather you remember the big picture of, of how all this stuff works. So I want to, we're going to figure out the symmetry of these four um, equations. So in order to do that, even though it doesn't ask me for this, all it asks me for is the symmetry. Um, I'm going, I need to know what kind of curve these are. So this has an A and a B, so here A equals B. This is a limousine, so I look at my limousine column. And what kind is it if A equals B? Cardioid. Cardioid, very good. Cardioid. All right, so then I'm going to make myself a very rough sketch of what it is. Okay, I don't care about values, I'm not plotting points, I'm just trying to figure out symmetry. So if this is cosine and it's positive, then it's going to look something like that, right? Not as hardish, but it really doesn't matter because all I'm trying to do is figure out symmetry. And if I know at least that much, even if I don't know how to find my actual values and stuff, then I can figure out that it is symmetric to the polar axis. Okay, easy enough? Okay, so then I look at number two. It's going to be another limousine because I have... Uh, an A and a B. Here A is less than B. So when I look at my graphic organizer, what is it when A is less than B? Very good. Limit sign with an inner loop. So I'm inner loop limit sign. Right. So very rough sketch here. This is sine and it's negative, so I know it's down here somewhere and looking something like that. That's totally enough to tell me that it's symmetric with what? Good, theta equals pi halves. Okay. All right, number three, we got an r squared. That throws us immediately to the limniscates. And A is 3 here, but it really makes no difference because I'm, I'm not actually plotting points. But it's a limniscate. It's like a two-petal rose. It's a cosine function. So the first one is on the x-axis, so it would look something like that. So what is that symmetric to? The polar axis. Anything else? Theta equals pi halves. Anything else? The pole, can I rotate it 180 degrees and it looks the same? Yep, it's symmetric to the pole also. It has all three types of symmetry. Now, 
just that's not because it's a limniscate. It's because it's a limniscate and it's cosine. If this had been sine, it would look like this. It would still be symmetric to the pole, but not to the polar axis or theta equals pi halves, right? That's why you have to actually determine the type. All right, number four, one more limisson. So here A is greater than B, but A is not greater than or equal to two times B. So it's not convex. That would make this a dimpled limisson. This is sine, and it's negative. So it's down here. It would look something like this. <laughs> Not really anything like that, but <laughs> good enough for us to figure out symmetry, right? And um, that means it would be symmetric to theta equals pi halves. Okay. Any symmetry questions? So on your assignment today, when it asks you what type of symmetry, this is, this is what your answer should be. Like, you're, it's not going to be a checkbox. You're going to have to either say it's this one, this one, or if it's more than one, list them all, whatever. But your assignment's on Cami, but I want, we're going to look at it for a second because sometimes I feel like a crazy person, and I know sometimes y'all think I'm extra scattered, which I probably am, but I'm really not as in, um, incompetent as I seem sometimes. So um, somebody came and asked me a question on their assignment today. They had it open on Cami. And before I even looked at what she was asking me, I looked at this equation, and she had like negative 5 cosine of some weird italicized like capital T. And I was like, what is that? Did you change that? And she said, no, that's what it is. And I said, that's weird. I know I didn't type that in. I don't know what happened. So I thought, okay, I messed up, whatever. I don't even know what happened. I'll just tell everybody to fix it. So I pulled this up in my flip chart that I used to teach with, and I have nothing. Like, I don't even have a T. So I was like, that's weird, because I hadn't touched the document yet. So I said, whatever, I'm going to go in the document, I'm going to fix it so I can fix it for the rest of the classes. And this is why I'm showing you this, because I want to show you all, this is why I feel like I'm crazy sometimes. I open the document, which I hadn't fixed or tried, nothing. I opened it, the document has theta there. This is the same, exact same document that I uploaded to Cami and has a T and uploaded to my flip chart and has nothing. So I have no, I can't fix it because it is fixed, it's not wrong. So I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't think there's any other mistakes. Whatever number one happens to say for you, if I gave you a paper copy, when I, my printer at least thinks it's a theta. I don't know about everything else, but this should be negative 5 cosine of theta. If it's a T, change it to theta. If you have nothing, put a theta in there. If you have a theta, be thankful it worked for you because I don't know why it's not working for everybody. Okay, we good? Okay. Because when I mess up, I don't have a problem saying, I'm, oh, I messed up or whatever. I, I really, this is why I don't even know why. When I tell y'all things disappear and I don't know why, it's because things like this happen to me. I really have no clue. All right, any questions on any of that? Alrighty, then um, we do have, you do have a quiz tomorrow. I want to go ahead and make sure I say that on the video, too, because I have a lot of people absent today. You have a quiz tomorrow. It's going to be short and sweet. It's going to be a lot of the same things that's on the quiz's assignment. Okay? Any questions, then? All righty.